Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining Glory Road today. Today, we've got an exciting teaching. and I think this teaching will really help you mature your mindset, help you to see Christ's image on the inside of you. So let's get started. This is going to be in the book of Galatians. We're going to start reading in Galatians chapter 3, but we're going to spill over into Galatians chapter 4. So in Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith. Thank you, Felicia, for joining. We're in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, starting in verse 26. For, we, for ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now let's go to chapter 4. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons... God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, because of all this, everything He said, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, can you see that he says you're no longer a servant, but you are a son, but it's through Christ. And this is the reason why we need to understand who is Christ, what is Christ. Thank you, Jude, for coming today. Bless you, sir. We need to understand what Christ is so that as a son, we can be able to identify that to those that are around us because Christ is what makes you a son. So let's go back up here and kind of digress into this and, and see exactly what he's saying. Let's go back up to verse 26 of Galatians chapter 3. For ye are all the children of God. Now he wants you to understand that by faith in Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You're an heir of God. That's the only identity you need to be conferring with every day. It is the only identity that you need to connect to. It's the only identity that God has given you. It is the identity of being a son, but it's through Christ. So if you don't understand what Christ is, then even though you are a son, you'll never walk it out. So remember, Christ means anointing of the anointed one. Now the anointed one was Christ. That's the one we saw that came and said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's what made him anointed. That's what caused it to be. Uh, Mandy, thank you so much for joining today. Bless you. That's what made the Spirit of the Lord upon him and made him a son is the fact that the anointed one was anointed with the Spirit of the living God. See? So he said, we're all children of God, but it's through Christ Jesus. It's by faith. In Christ Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, well, well, I just believe in Jesus, that that makes you a son. No. He's saying the same thing that Jesus used to latch a hold of the spirit of life is the same faith we're going to have to use in order to become a son. Now, you remember 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says that faith lays hold on eternal life. Now, over here in Galatians chapter 3, look at verse 14. 
Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. If you don't have your Bibles, just mark, make, a, make a note of these scriptures and just go back and read them when you have the time to do it. He says in Galatians chapter 3, we'll start reading in verse 13, Christ hath, has already, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, you got to connect this. Christ is the life of God. Jessica, thank you so much for joining today. Christ is the life of God. You cannot walk in sonship except through the same faith Jesus walked in. Jesus said in Luke 4, 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He says what we just got through re reading, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, but it's through faith. The promise of the Spirit is the thing that faith gets a hold of. Now, what does faith get a hold of? Life. So now we see, in order to walk in Christ to be, son of, to be a son of God, you have to have faith that believes in the life of God. You have got to have a faith that takes a hold of life. That's what makes you a son. That's what does it. See, you don't receive sonship to get the life. You get life to become a son. You see? So we have to, we have to stop going after just sonship. We've got to go after the life because that's what makes you a son. It's the promise of the spirit of life. That's what you have the promise of. When, it, when the Bible says over there in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, he said, We have been given exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might become a partaker of His divine nature, having the promise of life. See, this promise of life causes you to escape the corruption that's in the world or the death that's in the world. So when you receive Christ, you're receiving not a person. You're receiving a life. Christ is the anointing that the anointed one was anointed with. He was anointed with the Spirit of God. Let's go over there to uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost or with the Spirit of the promise or the promised Spirit, the Spirit that has promise. What promise? Well, the promise of life. The same promise of God's divine nature that He told us over there in 2 Peter 1, 4. Through the exceeding great and precious promises, you become partakers of His divine nature or partakers of His life. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost and with power. What kind of power? Well, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 16, I believe it is, says that he received the promise of an endless life. So the promise that you and I are to walk by is the promise of his divine nature, endless life, the spirit of life. That's what your faith gets a hold of. That's what you're to believe. Oh, I know we want to believe in all our doctrines. We want to believe that for a new house and a new car and a bunch of money and believe for all those things. But if your faith is not reaching for eternal life, to access it right here and right now. Are you a son now? Oh, if everyone says yes, then you can't be a son without the life. So if I were to ask you, do you have eternal life? And will you live and not die? Oh, brother, now that's not possible until we go to heaven. Well, how do you know you're a son? Because the life of God is what makes you a son. See, when you're receiving Jesus, you're receiving a person. But when you receive Christ, you're receiving the life He died to give you. Two different things, and we've got to understand that. The church, I know what the church is stretching for. They're stretching for the right thing. They're stretching to receive the life of heaven, but we're postponing it. And we do that every time we're just trying to receive Jesus and not receive Christ. Big difference. It's a big difference. See, let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> you know this to be true. If Bill Gates comes around you, you don't want to receive him. You want to receive his money. <laughs> you don't want to receive Him. You want to receive His power. His power for what? His power to, to life, right? It's the reason you work to make a living. 
You don't go there and hug your boss and say, boy, I tell you, I'm so glad I joined with you. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. You come to join to the company so you can get the power of its life to care for you. Now get this little tidbit. People say, yeah, I work. I take care of my family. I do. I sure do that. Are you sure you do? Or is it the power of the company that you're connected to? See, you're trusting that as you give, you shall receive off of the life of the power of the company you're connected to. So you're not necessarily providing the life. You're not providing the living. The company is. You're just entering into a covenant with them. Now, they're much more powerful than you are on your own financially because you're, you're, you've submitted to them. So you're wanting to live off of what they have. You just enter covenant with them to tell them basically this. I don't have enough to care for my family, but I believe you do. So I'm going to connect to you. That's the same thing we do with Christ. See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Jesus couldn't have done it on his own. So he made covenant with the Father and said, I'll tell you what, I'll go there. You empower me. It's not me doing the work as you doing the work. So when you go to that company, it's not your power providing for your family. That's your, it's your commitment to give yourself subjectively to that company and submit your authority to it and say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Whatever you say, I'll do it. That is a form of lordship. Now, that's from a, from a natural perspective. But just imagine that if God has already supplied all your need according to His riches and glory, and the only thing He needs you to do is say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll take care of it. You say it, I'll do it. And that's, it's going to be that way. That's what makes the power of the company of God, if you want to put it that way in the analogy, flow down to the sun. You become an, an heir to the power of the covenant that you have connected to. So God is bigger than all. He's blessed. He created all things. It'd be a foolish thing not to be in covenant with Him. It'd be very foolish. So... Notice this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. They didn't say how God anointed Jesus Christ. You ever wondered why that says it like that? Because Christ is the anointing. That's how He became Jesus, the Christ. He's the anointed one with the anointing, which is the power, the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of Almighty God. Now, let's go back here again to the book of Galatians. And take a look at this again. For ye are all children of God by faith, by the very thing that lays hold on eternal life that makes you a son. But it's by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into what? Christ. It didn't say Jesus. It said into Christ. You have put on Christ. Not Jesus. You've put on Christ. It means you are so immersed in the life of God that it causes you to walk out your sonship. So what you have is full of God's life and power, but we'll never walk it out until we get totally immersed, put on the life of God. You can't do that if you're postponing it. This is why nobody in the world sees the power of the church, because the church is not putting this on. We're not putting on the promise of the Spirit through faith. We're putting on a religion, a denomination. We're putting on doctrines and traditions. We're putting on the very thing that causes the power of God to become weak. And the reason it becomes weak is because we're working a law against it. The law, the spirit of life, is when you say, Yes, sir, you say it, I'll do it. I'll put your word in my heart, my mouth. I'll see it as you see it, and I submit to it. That makes God's power come alive in you. It's that thing. He says, if you humble yourself under His mighty hand, under His mighty word, under His mighty instruction, then He will exalt you in due time. Who will? Christ in you. He's the hope and expectation of the glory of God being manifested in your life. John Bracey, thank you so much for coming today. All of you, thank you for taking the time to be here. So when you're talking about who you are, then you've got to recognize yourself in the identity of Christ as a son of God. You, you must. Now, you got like I said, you can't put Christ up there and you're down here. I'm just trying to make it. No, no, no. How about no, He's raised you up, made you sit together in heavenly places, has anointed you with the very same anointing that He was anointed with, and He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon Him, then the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. If He is heir of, of the world, then you're an heir of the world. If He was raised from the dead, you are raised from the dead. So we got to get this, this, this idea of more, less death and more life. We got to get that seated in our heart so that we speak more life than we do death. 
And that's how we get it to work. So, he said, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. Now think of Tony Stark. Tony Stark had to put on Iron Man if he ever wanted the power of Iron Man to come out and be used. He couldn't just sit there off on the side. Now I know technically in the movies, you know, he has everything is remote. But it all comes from the thinking of Tony Stark. You see that? So you don't have to necessarily have to have God come down and rest upon you before you can remotely work His power that's on the inside of you already. It comes from the mind of Christ. And you and I have been given that. And if you have the mind of Christ, you can put on the body of Christ through the way we think. Look, we are the way we are because of the way we think. So I put on Adam King because I think like Adam King. Now that's a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> but if I think like Christ, I put on Christ. When will Christ appear? I don't know. When are we thinking like Him? When are we talking like Him? When are we facing situations as Christ faced them, as life faces the corruption in the world? If we put on the mindset and put on the promise of God, if we'll understand that if we be Christ, then we're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of the Spirit of life. The same promise that Jesus was baptized in when the Father anointed Him. You could put the word baptized there if you want to. How God the Father baptized Jesus of Nazareth. How He anointed Him. He totally immersed Him in the life of the Father. He totally immersed Him in life. And this is the reason why Jesus never walked around talking death and frustration. He always talked life. He spoke the desired end result. Well, that's what kings have to do. Now let's go again real quickly to, to chapter 4, Galatians 4. He says, Now I say that the heir, that's you and that's me. He just got through saying this, that if we're in Christ, then we're heirs according to the promise. Now, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, See, if you're a child, you're still an heir, but you're a child. It means you're immature, differing nothing from a servant, though we be Lord of all. So as long as we're a child, we'll always walk as a servant instead of walking as Lord. See, you're designed to be a king. He's crowned you with His glory. We are to walk around as a king, not as a servant, but as a king. And yet the church says, oh, we're just servants of the Lord. That's not the way God sees it. He sees us as king. But we're immature. We don't have the mind of Christ, and therefore we walk around acting like kids, <laughs> get, get into problems, and we don't know how to handle them. Not in Christ. We try to handle them the world's way, and that's why we seem to trip over our own feet. But in Christ, you're an heir of God. In Christ, you've been crowned king. Well, how do you get it to manifest? Well, verse 2 tells us, "...but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father." So when does, it, when does God validate you as a son? Well, you know, we're just waiting on the Father. Rapture is going to take place in God's own good time. We're just going to sit here and stuff. No, no, no. The time appointed of the Father for you to walk in your position as a king is not up to God. It's up to you. The time appointed is a standard, and God leaves you to get to that standard. What is it? It's called maturity. See, as long as a person thinks like a child, doesn't know that they've been anointed with God's life, then they'll always stay a child. But as soon as somebody starts moving towards what God says about them, they start to grow. They start to see themselves differently. And when you see yourself differently, you talk differently, think differently, and that starts to produce your maturity. That starts to see... As a matter of fact, when the storms of life come, you, you, you face them totally different. You don't complain about them. You start speaking to them. <laughs> you start standing up saying, excuse me. William Mahoney, bless you for coming today. God bless you. So you, you've got to be able to understand that this power and this might is abiding in you right now. You don't know it because you haven't been told. And I'm not willing to tell you what, what a lot of other preachers will tell you. They're going to tell you, well, just wait. You know, God will do something sometime, but if it's His will. And the whole time God has said, hold on a second, now I'm in you, greater is he that's in you. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. He said, I've given you the victory through faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world of corruption, of death, of sin. It's your faith. Why? Because faith lays hold on eternal life. So eternal life is in you. You just got to start believing that it's in here instead of everything up there. 
People are praying and can't get God to hear them. Why? Because they're trying, they can't get their prayers to go past the ceiling. Well, if Tony Stark wanted uh, Iron Man to show up, he gave voice command. You understand? He determined what Iron Man did. He didn't ask Iron Man to do it. You see, that's the problem. We're too busy asking God, would you please? And then when nothing happens, we have this, well, I guess, you know, maybe I didn't tithe enough, go to church. Maybe I didn't pray enough. Maybe I didn't this enough. And the whole time is the kingdom of God operates and, and gets to moving when a king shows up. And a king decrees. And when a king speaks, he has what he says. That's the identity the church really doesn't know much about. We know about being a servant, but we don't know about much about being a son. And when you're a son of God, you've got some authority. You've got some power. This is what we have to understand. How long are you going to stay a child? That's not God's choice. That's to our immersion. It's up to us to how quickly will we get immersed in the identity that God has said that you are. I believe in you. I believe that you're a son of God. I believe that you got the power and the potential to change not just your life, but the lives of everyone around you. You can change your generation. You just have to start looking inward instead of outward. You've got to start realizing who you are before you can change the world with yourself. You've got to. It's Christ in you. It's not all about you. It's Christ in you. But you have to abide in Him. You've got to be the Tony Stark that steps into Iron Man and says, Come on, let's go. We're going to go change the world. Christ in you knows how to stand up and confirm what you say with signs and wonders following. I challenge you today to grow up in Christ. Jesus did the job, but He came to die to give you Christ, to give you His life. Receive it. Start walking up in it. You're stronger than you realize. So be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Thank you so much for coming today. Until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you.